I am continuing my series on classical mechanics, um, and I've done linear velocity, uh, one-dimensional velocity with the linear drag force, so a, a force that depends is proportional to the velocity, and then did two-dimensional. Uh, so now I want to do one-dimensional motion with a what we call quadratic air resistance. So quadratic air resistance is a backwards pushing drag force that is proportional to the velocity squared. So as a vector, you would write that as some drag coefficient that depends on the material and the shape and the size of the object and all that stuff. We're just going to call it C. The magnitude of the velocity, you can't square vectors, so you got to take the magnitude. And then you have to multiply by a unit vector v hat in order to get it back as a vector. Now, of course, we're going to do this a simple way because we're going to do it in one dimension. And we're not going to, it's horizontal, so there's only, the only force acting on it is that. So it starts with the velocity v0 as a backwards pushing force. So in the x direction, I can write this as f net x equals uh, mass, and I'm going to call that the positive x direction. Uh, mass, and it's moving this way, okay. So mass times acceleration, and these are all x directions, so I'm not going to put ax, it's just assumed. And that's going to be equal to negative c v squared. So this is the magnitude of the velocity in one dimension, so I can just write that as v squared. Okay, but it is backwards in the negative direction. This is no matter what the velocity is, this is going to be in the negative direction. Now, if your if your object's moving to the left, this equation doesn't work because then you'd have to have the, the force that way. So um, we're just going to define that as our axis of, of uh, m the direction of motion in the positive x direction. Okay, so I can write this as uh, m dv dt. The acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. Uh, negative v squared c v squared and then what I want to do is to get all the v terms on one side all the t terms on the other side and so that's not too terribly difficult I can divide both sides by uh, v squared and I can uh, multiply both sides by dt over m so this becomes dv over v squared is negative c over m dt I know I skipped a little bit of algebra there, but I don't think that should be too bad, right? I mean, you can see that algebra, where that comes from. But now, since this side only depends on V, this side only depends on T, I can integrate both sides. Okay. So, let's do that. If I integrate D, and I'm going to have a constant because these are indefinite integrals, and that's fine. So, if I have DV over V squared, uh, so if I integrate that, uh, this is not too ter terribly difficult to integrate. I get uh, negative 1 over v, right? Because if that has if that's v to the negative 1, uh, and, I'd multi and I to take the derivative, I'd get a negative sign, which would cancel that. And then I'd reduce the power of that, so I get negative 2. So I, would, I get that. So this is, uh, the derivative of this is that. And then here, this is pretty easy. Uh, I have negative c over m t because I just have those terms are constant and the integrate t I get t, uh, dt I get t and then I have some plus some constant and this is a capital C see it's capital I want to use c for the constant now I can solve for that constant I can say at t equals zero the velocity is v zero so if I put that in I get negative one over v zero equals negative c over m times zero plus capital C I know that's not really a capital C, but I just I just made that up. So that means that that term zero, so cap the constants negative one over v zero. So if I put that back in over here, I get uh, minus one over v equals negative c over m t minus one over v zero. Okay, so um, let's I want to solve for v, right? So the first thing I can do is to multiply everything by a negative 1, and that's that. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to take the inverse of both sides, and I have it. V is going to be 1 over C over M T plus 1 over V0. That's my velocity as a function of time. Um, let's simplify it a little bit. So one of the common things people do is to call this... Uh, tau 
as m over c. That's our time constant. And that means that this is just going to be uh, t over tau. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so I get 1 over, isn't that, is that what I did? No. Don't, don't listen to me. So, okay. <laughs> so let's fact, let's multiply the top and the bottom by V0. So I get V0 over uh, C V0T over M plus 1. Now I can say tau is equal to C V0 over M. No, 1 over tau. So this becomes V0 over 1 plus t over tau. I switched the order just to make it a little bit nicer, and that's going to be v as a function of t. Okay, so there's my velocity as a function of time, and that's my tau. Is that right? So tau is m over vc. Yeah. And then that has units. This is going to be, um, this does have units of 1. Tau has units of time, so I get uh, this has no units and I can add that to one and I get units of V zero. Let's just check real quick if this makes sense. I'm gonna plot this to show you that it does, but we'll do that at the end. As T gets larger and larger and larger, this term gets larger and so the, the velocity gets smaller, which makes sense. If I shoot this, uh, it's gonna slow down. And that's that. Okay, now I also want to get the position as a function of time. So let's start off, I'm just gonna write my two important things here and then I can move my sheet. Uh, I'm going to write these two things. So I have tau equals m over c v0 and then I have my velocity function. v is a function of t is v0 over 1 plus t over tau. Now I want to solve this for position so I can write the the velocity as uh, dx dt. So dx dt equals v0 over 1 plus t over tau. And again, I want to get this, I want to separate the variables. So I want to get all the x terms on one side, all the t terms on the other side. There's only one x term, and it's dx, so that's pretty easy. So I can just multiply both sides by dt, and I get dx equals v0 over 1 plus t over tau times dt. Okay, so where am I now? Okay, so what I want to do is to integrate both sides, just like before. So how do I integrate this? Well, I mean, <clears throat> you know, this is where it having a lot of practice in integration comes in handy because you can see things, right? I can see, oh, I have like a a dt and kind of like over a t. And if it was dt over t, I could integrate that. So let's say this is u is 1 plus t over tau. And if that's the case, I can take the derivative of this, du, is going to be dt over tau. So dt is tau times du. Now I have a dt. I can substitute in tau du, and I can put u for that. So I can change this integral to v0, leave that there, uh, the integral of tau du over u. Now that integral I can do, right? So the integral of du over u is just going to be the natural log of u. So I get v0 tau natural log of u plus a constant. So that integral becomes x, so I have x equals v0 tau natural log of, let's go ahead and put in my value for u back in. So I have natural log of 1 plus t over tau plus some constant, and that's a capital constant. Okay, so again, I can solve for the constant by saying at t equals 0, x is equal to x0, some initial position. So if I put in t equals 0, I get x0 equals v0 tau natural log of 1 plus 0, 1 plus c. So that's 0, natural log of 1, 0. So I get c is x0. So now I have, let me put it up here, x as a function of time is x0 plus v0 tau 
natural log of 1 plus t over tau. Box, box, box. So it wasn't too bad. Okay, but let's, let's make a graph of both the velocity and the position as a function of time. Um, just because I think it will look nice. Uh, we can plot this numerically. I do need to pick some values uh, for everything. So I need, let's say, V0 equals, I don't know, I just picked 5 meters per second. Uh, C equals 0 0.1. I'm just picking stuff here. Uh, M equals 0 0.01. So that's the only terms I need. T, tau. I need M. Got that kilograms. I need C, I need V0, I, and X0. X0 is 0. Okay, so let's switch over to Python and graph this. And if I need to change these numbers, if I will, because I can do that, because I'm in control. Okay, so if you're not familiar with graphing in, in GlowScript, uh, this is WebVPython. It's Python in a web page. Uh, super great, super nice. I like it a lot. And let's make a nice graph. So I'm going to call the, I'm going to make two graphs. I'm going to make a velocity versus time and a position versus time. And they're going to be for the same time. So, but there'll be two graphs next to the other. So G1 is a graph. Um, title equals, let's give this a title of V versus T. And then X title is going to be time in seconds. Y title is uh, velocity in meters per second. And then I'm going to say FV equals G curve, color equals color dot blue, uh, graph equals G1. So in Python, oh, I'm sorry, this is here. In Python and GlowScript vPython, if I make more than one graph, um, I have to give those graph axes labels. I have to give it a name. And then when I make the function to plot, FV is a function, that's actually the curve. I have to tell it which graph I want it to go in. Um, you don't have to tell it what color it'll pick, but I like blue. Okay, let's make the other graph G. Oh, I need to put the width. Let's put this. Width, you don't have to do this, equals 500. Height equals 200. So I want them skinny so I can put two on top of each other. Let's copy this whole thing. Uh, G2 equals graph. Uh, the same width. The Y title is going to be uh, X and it's going to be X versus T and then I'm going to say FX equals G curve and let's make this one red color equals color dot red graph equals G2 now let's go and put in our constants uh, V0 um, yeah is what did I say it was 5 M equals 0 0.01 uh, C, lowercase c, is 0 0.1, and uh, X0 is 0. Let's put that in there, too. Okay, so I'm going to plot at different values of time. So I need to calculate different values of time. So I'm going to start at T equals 0, and then I need a time step. Let's just put, it doesn't really matter, because we're not, we're not doing a numerical calculation. We're just plotting. So I could do something as big as 0.1 if I wanted to, but I'm going to do 0 0.01 because... If it's more work for the computer, that doesn't bother me because, um, you know, I'm just a, uh, a thoughtless human that, that makes these computers do what I want them to do. But maybe the computer likes it. I don't know. Okay. So let's say while T is less than, I don't know how long it's going to take to get something, let's just say five seconds. Uh, so number one, I'm going to calculate the velocity. So here, all I'm doing is using my equation that I typed in before, that I wrote up before. It's just going to be V0 divided by, oh, and let's calculate tau. Tau equals M divided by C times V0. That way I can use that. So V is going to be V0 divided by 1 plus T divided by tau. I'm just typing in the equation. That's all I have to do. Uh, and then let's calculate X. X equals X0 plus V0 times tau times the natural log, which I think is log. Log is natural log. 
now I might make a mistake. That's fine. Let's just go with it. Uh, natural log of 1 plus 1 plus t over tau. Now I'm going to plot both those data points, and then I'm going to update time. So let's say fv.plot tv, fx.plot tx, oop, tx, and then t equals t plus dt. So I increment the time interval. I never even saved it. I should probably do that, but let's just run it. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I always surprise myself. Uh, let's save this as 1D quadratic drag, no gravity. I am going to do gravity, but not in this video. Okay, so let's see. I ran it for too long. Let's run this for two seconds and just see what happens. Still too long. Well, that that's not too bad. Um, looks like a half second. It's probably, let's just do that. Half a second. Okay. And again, you can change the parameters around, but the velocity decreases down to almost zero. Uh, the, the position reaches some fairly constant value. Uh, it doesn't really level. That's kind of strange that that velocity right there, I guess it's still moving pretty fast. Okay, well, there you go. So uh, I will give you the code for this. That does make a nice graph though, don't you think? I think that makes a nice graph. I'll give you a code for this down below. If you want to look at the other videos, um, on linear drag, on projectile motion with linear drag. Uh, the, the playlist for all those videos will be down below and you should be able to find it in there. But if you have any questions, just comment down below. You know, I usually answer those questions. So that's that.